Hi, I'm Carl Taylor. Welcome to another photo breakdown where I walk you through step by step my exact lighting setups on a particular image. This week, we're going to look at these images and how they were shot. So we have two images here. One of them you can see our model surrounded by these light tubes with these beautiful sheens of light running down um, the accessories of the face mask that she's wearing and then down the glossy clothes in the shot. And then another outfit change here and a different sort of look for the shot, but that same glossy uh, effect in the clothing, this sort of futuristic sci-fi look to the shot through the styling, which was done by stylist Bianca Swan. The model was the uh, lovely Karina White, and uh, she played the part of this sort of futuristic android for me in these shots. Now, the lighting on both of these shots is exactly the same. So what I did with our model was run through uh, a couple of outfit changes, a few different poses, uh, but kept the same lighting setup for uh, these two pictures. So let's take a look at the lighting setup. Uh, well, first of all, let's see if you can figure it out because you may think actually first glance might be quite obvious. And I would say it probably is obvious, but it's a little bit different for me in the way I normally work on this one. And uh, I'll explain that in a second when we come to the lighting diagram. Let's just take another look at the other shot, a little bit larger as well. So again, looking at the lighting, looking at the effect, let's zoom out on the full shot. And uh, let's see if you can figure out how that may have been accomplished. OK, let's take a look at the lighting diagram and I'll walk you through. So the first thing you'll notice looking at the two images is that the background looks almost black and it was actually a very dark grey. I often use very dark greys, mid greys to dark greys so that I have the ability, if I want, to not light them uh, and not put light on them and therefore they end up at virtually black. Then if I throw more light on them, of course I can make them that mid-grey and if I throw lots of light on them, then I can make them lighter grey. Now a lot of photographers use a sort of lighter grey tone as their choice of backgrounds, but I prefer mid to dark grey, I find I've got more control. In this case, this was actually an infinity cove, or in the US they call them cycloramas, uh, in a large studio in London, and we had the uh, floor and the cove painted in a dark grey. So you can see here the floor is actually painted in the dark grey material and that runs all the way up the back of the cove behind our model. And that's quite common. Even here in, in, in my own studio, we regularly paint the cove different colours for different shoots. So the background here showing that dark grey. We also had a grey floor, which I've just indicated with those lines. And then our model was some distance away because this was a large studio and I wanted the ability to move the model further away from the background so that I could let that background fade out to darker black more easily uh, because no light that was on the model, uh, for example, would be hitting my background unless it was controlled lighting that I actually wanted on the background. So in this case, I think my model was about four meters away from that background. We then have the camera about here. It was a little bit closer for the top shot there, but it was a bit further away for that shot because obviously I needed to include the full length height of the model, as you can see in the image there, and a little bit of floor space above and a little bit of space um, uh, sorry, a little bit of floor space below and a little bit of space above. Now the only actual studio light that I used, and that is a light that fires a flash burst, it's traditional studio light, was the fluter. 
If you don't know what a fluter is, we're bringing one up on screen now. This is a fluter, and a fluter is basically a Fresnel lens modifier. So it focuses the light into a really nice tight beam, and then by changing the position of the light source or the lamp head in the modifier, you can change the angle of the beam of light. So you can widen the beam out, or you can narrow the beam in, and it has a beautiful soft graduated edge to the beam where it transitions from light into darkness. The other great thing with a fluter is that it directs the light forwards very well and it can throw the light a long way, which is actually the same uh, design, the Fresnel lens, just, uh, designed by Augustine Fresnel 200 years ago or so. Uh, it's been used commonly in lighthouses for many, many years um, because it has this great capability of projecting light a long distance. Uh, Fresnel lenses are often used in theatre lighting as well, and although uh, the Bron Color Fluter is one type of Fresnel, I believe Elinchrom also have a similar modifier, Profoto have one. Most lighting manufacturers that are serious about lighting usually have a decent large Fresnel in their lighting modifiers selection um, of modifiers. Now, the background glow was created by that fluter, that Fresnel modifier, shining a light, as you can see there, directly behind our model. And if we look carefully at the shot, you can see that glow behind the model that is being thrown onto that dark gray wall by the fluter. So you can see that slightly lighter gray glow behind the model that was created by that fluter or Fresnel lens hitting the wall. Now, interestingly, and this is unusual for me because many of you know my work. I'm using studio lighting all the time for lighting my models, my subjects, etc. But in this case, I used just the actual artificial um, continuous uh, light that we'd created. We created that with these. And that was a series of strip lights hanging vertically. And these were just the standard conventional uh, light fluorescent light tubes like you see in buildings and people's kitchens or whatever. Um, the standard six foot long fluorescent light tubes, that's what these were. And what we did is we uh, made up a circular frame out of plywood and we had them hanging on wires from that circular frame. And we had an electrician wire them all up individually into each light tube, up through the plywood, across our crossbar, which was over the set with the plywood and the vertical light tubes hanging downwards. And we had the electrician cable going for that out of shot. So what you see here is actually standard fluorescent light tubes just hanging down surrounding our model. And that's exactly the same in this shot here as well except all we did differently was at the top here where the plywood um, holding the hanging tubes and the wire, that was all covered in black and black uh, velvet or black paint. And then any remnants of that left in the image was basically photoshopped from the shot for the final image. So the lighting then that we see on the model is actually the lighting cast from those fluorescent light tubes. And that is not the normal way I work, because as I say, normally I'm using uh, bursts of light from Studio Flash. Here, I had to up the ISO on the camera to 800 ISO in order to capture that continuous lighting and give me sufficient depth of field, which I think was around F11 or F16. Those type of light tubes also give off a rather um, unnatural color balance. They give quite a green sort of tinge to the light. And whilst you can neutralize to a gray card, you'll never get really accurate looking skin color because the light itself is missing part of the spectrum. So when they're not full spectrum lights, light doesn't reflect off of your subject in the same way that natural light or speed lights or studio flash does. You're missing part of the spectrum. 
And with fluorescent lights like this, you end up with a sort of horrible greeny tinge to the skin color uh, in the image when using fluorescent light. Now, normally that would be a big problem, but in this case, it was absolutely perfect because what we were trying to depict here was an Android type character and having that almost weird looking artificial color to the skin uh, worked really, really well for us. And again, even here, you can see that sort of greeny tinge, uh, strange skin tone color on the arms there. You don't see so much of the face on that one, but it actually all worked okay for these shots. So uh, very simple, really. Um, basically one studio light being a large Fresnel lens illuminating the background wall that was flash lighting and then a multiple of fluorescent tubes hanging from a rig surrounding our model and using a higher ISO to capture the shot. And wonderful work from our stylists, makeup artists, assistants, and our model uh, Karina for the wonderful results that we got there. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.